Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to, you said it, Virtual Sunday School. Yeah, I don't know what that was. Welcome, welcome back. It's me again, Gracie, back for another Sunday with me and Jesus. Jesus is also here. Holy Spirit's here too. God says hi. Um, so welcome back. We are talking about an evangelist today. Does anyone know what evangelism means? Evangelism is basically telling people about God. And so we are actually going to hear a story about how someone evangelized to another person. Because, as we've been saying for so many weeks through the Holy Spirit, it is our job to go and make disciples of all nations, which is basically evangelism. And so this is how um, evangelism took place in the Bible. And it kind of can help us learn how to evangelize now. So... I've told the story in a little bit of a different way. It's kind of all over the place. I drew it and then I talked into a microphone and it's like my drawings. My drawings are awful. Just keep that in mind. I am not an artist. I love to draw. It's not a gift of mine per se, but just just watch. It's It'll be interesting and we'll we'll come back and talk about it after. So enjoy. Hello everybody, today is a new different story and this is the story of Philip the Evangelist. Philip the Evangelist was a teacher and influencer during the early church and this is a story about how he um, ministered to a person on the side of the road. I accidentally spelt his name wrong but ignore that. So basically this is the story. So here we have, as I'm drawing him, this is Philip. I wanted to add a mustache or a beard. So here we are. This is Philip. He is an evangelist. Our guy Phil. Great guy. He loves Jesus. And this is an Ethiopian eunuch. I know. That was a mustache. It didn't turn out, but he has a mustache. I tried to make them look like two different people. Sorry if it's ugly, but I've tried my best. Um, so, yes, Ethiopian eunuch. We never get his name, but that is who he is. So, the Ethiopian eunuch is sitting on the side of the road, and he is reading from the prophet of Isaiah. And then Phil, our guy Phil, he is told by God to come over and talk to this Ethiopian eunuch. And so he comes, he's like, I come in peace, hi, how are you, what you doing? And the Ethiopian's like, I'm reading from the book of Isaiah, but I have no idea what's going on. That's a question mark. It doesn't really look like a question mark, but it is. So Philip takes this opportunity to explain the whole concept of the gospel. He says, God sent his son Jesus down, and Jesus sacrificed his life for us, and he basically told the story of the gospel to this eunuch. And the eunuch is listening to all this, and he is shocked. And the Holy Spirit comes down and touches the eunuch's heart. And the eunuch's like, I love this. I want to be baptized. I want to become a Christian. And so after talking to him, he's decided, there's a river right over there. Let's just do this right now. And so... They went straight into the water. Here they are, Philip and our eunuch. They are in the water, and Philip baptizes the Ethiopian eunuch. Basically, right after he, he hears about the gospel, he is ready to commit his life to Jesus through baptism. And so he got baptized, and he accepted Jesus into his heart, and that's a really awesome thing. So this is just one story of the many, many stories that inevitably took place during the growth of the early church and the early church kept growing and growing because the apostles were touching people's hearts and the holy spirit was working through them and so the church started off as the 12 disciples in the upper room and it grew and it grew and it touched more and more hearts and it didn't stop growing it is still growing to this day and so the church was established in around 30 AD when Jesus died, maybe like 35 AD, and it has kept growing until the year 2020, which is where we are right now. We get to be a part of the same church and the same Christianity that was back then. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed my weird hand-drawn Bible story. I'm trying to make this interesting. And I feel like there are different methods to teaching Bible stories. And I want to try and find a super fun way that entertains but also educates. So if you have any ideas on how I can tell these stories to you, please let me know because I've tried it a couple different ways and I don't know what works best. So tell me what works best for you and I will try and do that more often. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know what to do if I don't get any feedback. So let me know. Um, but yeah, that was our story. I hope you guys liked it. It was, I like this story. I think it is a very good real example and something we can apply to our lives where people are like, hey, what's the gospel? And then we can just jump right in and tell them and let the Holy Spirit do what Holy Spirit wants to do and people get saved. That's literally all evangelism is. People sometimes make it a whole like complicated thing, but really it's just sharing the gospel with people. That's all. And so that was the story. I hope you guys liked it. I talked briefly at the end of the story about the growth of the church and I said that we are a part of the church back then just like years and years and years later. And so basically the church is this huge family that is continuing to grow and grow and grow. And so my question is, I want you to take a wild guess and guess how many people are in the church? How many Christians are in the world out of the like seven billion-ish people on earth? How many of them do you think are Christians? So according to my curriculum, my Bible curriculum that I have here on my screen, it says 2.2 .2 of the 7.3 billion people in the world are Christians. That's 2.2 .2 billion family members, basically. We are all one big family. You know when people say, like, you're my brother in Christ, you're my sister in Christ? Well, yeah. So, 2.2 .2 family members. Imagine a family reunion with your 2.2 .2 billion family members. Crazy times. But that's basically what the church is. It's one big family. And so we have our family, like our mom and dad and our siblings, and we have our extended family, so our aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandpas, cousins. But then we have our church family. And that's Living Waters, that's other churches in Kingston, that's other churches around the world. 2.2 .2 billion people, crazy. So church isn't just a building because you know, we meet in a senior center. So we're not, our building isn't a church building, it's a senior center, but we still go to church. So my question is, what do you think makes church, church? So what part of church makes church, church? That's so confusing, but I think you might get what I mean. So church basically is just people gathered around Jesus and his word through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so when people are gathered together and they are worshiping God and the Holy Spirit is there and they are centered in and focusing on Jesus and his word, that is church. So no matter what that looks like, that is church. And so even though we don't have a real church building, we still go to church because we are a group of people meeting together, talking about Jesus, focusing on Jesus, and inviting the Holy Spirit to come and influence us as we are gathered together. So that was today's video. I hope you liked it. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys like these videos. If you have any feedback on ways I can make these more fun, more interactive, ways that I can help you during our continued quarantine, please, please, please let me know because I am here for you. And so let me know if there's anything that I can do to make your life better, more bright, more shiny. Um, but for real, just let me know. Please email me, message me on Facebook talk to my dad, get my number, whatever. I don't care. Just talk to me. I am here for you. So yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching another video. I hope you enjoyed. Take care. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Be good. Listen to your parents. Okay. Bye. <laughs>